Once again, everyone, my name is Crystal Atwell, and I serve as the Director of Student Development at APHA. This is a session and position that is near and dear to my heart. During my time as a student pharmacist, this was a role that I held, and I can tell you it's very vital to the success of the chapters and what we do within APHA. So tonight, um, we hope that you learn as much from this session as you need to be successful as you move forward in your fall campaign throughout your year and, of course, your spring membership drive as well. So we want you um, to be able to ask questions. And there are one of two ways you can do that. You can use your telephone or you can use your mic and speakers. I would ask that if you're in an area with a telephone that you put yourself on mute unless you're going to be asking a question. And to ask a question, there are two ways that you can do that. You can either use the raise your hand function, and that's something that you would do if you want to ask your question verbally, or you can type in your questions. And I would strongly encourage you to type those in throughout the webinar. We're going to hold them all and address them at the end. But as you think of things, please don't um, wait until the end. You don't want to forget about them. So go ahead and type those questions in, and we will um, take as many of them as we can. If you know someone that wanted to be on tonight but could not be here, that's OK. Um, these slides are going to be posted for you to review. And I would definitely um, encourage you to share them with anyone that you know might be interested in them. So with that, I'm actually going to ask um, our other two um, presenters for this evening to introduce themselves. So we'll start with you, LaToya. Latoya, if you wouldn't mind just doing a quick introduction. I'm sorry about that. I was still muted. <laughs> um, my name is Latoya Wilson, and I'm the manager of membership and chapter services. And I've been in this position for a little over two months. And I'm really enjoying it and excited about working with you all. All right. And then I will turn it over to Maggie to introduce herself and get us into tonight's presentation. Hello, everyone. My name is Maggie Oster, and I'm from The Ohio State University. I serve as one of your two APHA ASP national members at large this year. I'm excited everyone's on here, and we're looking forward to getting you off to a good start with your membership this year. So first, um, it is very important for us to understand the mission of APHA. So the mission of um, the APHA ASP is to be the collective voice of student pharmacists to provide opportunities for professional growth, to improve patient care, and to envision and advance the future of pharmacy. Now, this is really important for everyone to know, but at the center of this mission is really the fact that we need our members to fulfill it. And this is where you come into play. MVP, Membership Vice President, Most Valuable Player, it's important for you to really take charge of your role because everything we do comes from the members. So it's crucial for you to bring our members in bring them together, and help us make all of these really awesome things that we do as a, an academy happen. So as a membership vice president, now this is not a detailed checklist. This is just a general overview. Starting off in the fall, a lot of your work is going to be with six, and really making sure the fall membership drive is off to a good start and you're aware of how everything is going to work. You want to work closely with your executive committee to set membership goals and objectives. Because again, you are the membership vice president. However, membership is everyone's job. Another thing you want to focus on this fall is really how to make things fun and exciting to get people interested in joining APHA ASP and why they want to be a member. Now, this you want to, again, this will happen in the spring. So it's good to get some ideas now, some things you can do to, be, to keep everything exciting. Um, you'll want to repeat again in the spring. Another thing throughout the year that you're going to want to focus on is how to keep your members actively engaged. Make sure that they are aware of all of the opportunities and all of the benefits available to them as members so that they can really understand the benefit of their membership. And if you guys have any more questions, um, the, membership vice, or the Membership Vice President Toolkit, which the Toya will go in in a little bit more detail, this has a lot more details with your roles and responsibilities. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it back over to LaToya. Okay, so this evening I'll be going over all of the important details that will help you to make your fall drive successful. So 
to begin, I'm going to start going over the importance of setting goals for your chapter. Your chapter president should have received a chapter performance overview at the Student Leadership Institute. And on this um, performance overview, it should have showed a five-year snapshot of your chapter's performance. When it comes to setting your chapter's goals, you want to look at your school's performance figures to determine what would be a realistic goal for you to set for your chapter. You want to aim to get at least 65% of the students enrolled in your school's pharmacy program because they will add to your membership numbers. I would like you to email me all of your miracle goals once you have set them, and then I will keep track of your progress throughout the fall drive and send out bi-weekly status updates by email. Next, I want to talk about your fall drive boxes. This is, of course, a very imperative part of your um, student membership fall drive. Your chapter advisor should have already received your fall drive boxes and given them to you. If you have not received your fall drive boxes, please contact your, contact your um, chapter advisor immediately, because if they have not received them, then we have to figure out um, what the problem is and get them to you as soon as possible. Your fall drive box includes some copies of a quick reference guide which highlights some important information found in your membership vice president toolkit. Your toolkit can also be found online under chapter officer resources and in this they go through all of the online processes and any information that you need um, pertaining to your position. So you want to go over this. It's very important because if students have questions, any information in that toolkit should provide you with the answers. In your membership um, toolkit, please pay specific attention to your online join process because you will need to be familiar with this process because once the students go through it, if they run into any issues or if anything looks unfamiliar to you, you should call me so that we can troubleshoot the issue. You should also have an APHA ASP dues breakdown sheet in your box. And in this sheet, it should have the total amount a student will pay when they enroll through your chapter. And you want to let all students know that the overall um, dues that they pay when they join through your chapter include the state and chapter dues because some students are a little bit confused when they join and they see that our national dues are $45, but because of chapter and state dues, it goes up. So you want to explain this to them at the beginning of the enrollment process. Also, your, your fall drive box includes dual enrollment flyers that explain the dual membership option. The dual membership rate has increased to $115 for the fall drive, so you also want to be aware of that just in case students have any questions about that. There are also uh, folders with pockets in your box. and. In, in these folders, it has an overview of the benefits that we offer students when they become a member of APHA. And these folders can also be personalized with your chapter offering. So you can stick any information in there about any upcoming events or anything that your chapter would like students to know once they become a part of APHA through your chapter. And also, we don't want you to forget we don't want you to forget to use the student pharmacist recruitment video on the APHA ASP YouTube channel. And a lot of chapters, of course, we want you to go paperless. So you can email this link to your students, um, and they'll be able to watch it once they open the email that you send them. And we are currently trying to transition to a completely online enrollment drive. But your boxes do include personalized enrollment forms, blank enrollment forms, and, transmit and a transmittal form. And although we don't anticipate there will be any problems with the online enrollment process, we included these forms as precaution because we want, to, we want you to have a backup plan just in case you run into any issues with the process. But our goal is really to equip you with everything you need to ensure that your fraud drive is a success. Once you have received your fall drive box and your goals have been set, then you can go ahead and begin your drive. And right now, I just want to take a quick poll to see how many of you have actually gone through the online process and renewed your membership. All right, so on your screens, um, we just want a quick yes or no. If you have had an opportunity to go online and renew your membership, to kind of get a feel where we're at. If you haven't had an opportunity to do this, one of the tips that I will give you is give us the other members of your chapter's um, executive committee and do it together. Get in one room, have everybody at the computer, do it together so that everybody gets familiar with um, 
the system you can help in answering those questions. So it looks like almost everyone has responded. I'll give you a couple more seconds. All right, I'm going to close the poll now and share those results. So it looks like a majority of you have not yet had an opportunity um, to sign up online. If you have not um, and you're having trouble, Latoya is going to help you um, walk through that. And if you've just been waiting for this webinar, then hopefully after this evening, you'll be able to um, go on and do that. So Latoya, back over to you. Yes, it's very important that you go through this process because once you go through the process, you'll be able to identify any issues and once the fall drive has started and you run into these issues, you don't want it to be a, a big problem for students trying to enroll through your chapter. So as soon as possible, you want to go on and go through that process so that you'll know what it will look like before the students actually go on to enroll through your chapter. And now I want to talk about what chapter advisors have access to on pharmacist.com. And we included this information because I've been um, getting a couple of calls from membership vice presidents because you guys are wondering where you get this information from. And so we have given your chapter advisors access to all of this information. Your chapter advisors have access to your reimbursement reports and your rosters. So when you need this um, or when you have a request for your rosters or reimbursement reports, you want to take it to your chapter advisor and they'll be that they'll immediately be able to give you this information. Uh, your chapter advisor is, is also responsible for assigning your chapter's executive committee positions. So if anything changes or you have anyone new that you would like to include in your executive committee, please let your chapter advisor know they can go in and update this information from their pharmacist.com profile. They can also remove and add people at any time. So go to them anytime you have any changes and they'll be able to make those updates on the website. Also, they are responsible for updating your chapter dues, and this happens once one time per year, and we'll notify your chapter advisors by email, and they'll be able to go on the website to update your chapter dues. Now I want to talk about the benefits. Please be sure to read the inside of your folders that are sent in your fall drive boxes as previously discussed because this gives you a great overview of the benefits that we offer the um, APHA ASP pharmacy students when they join. In addition to the benefits listed in your folder, 2015 graduates who join or renew by October 31st, 2014 will be eligible to receive the 11th printed edition of the NAPLEX book as well as access the NAPLEX questions on pharmacylibraries.com. These are member-only bonus questions and they mimic the experience of taking the online test. This will also keep track of all the students' incorrect answers and direct them where to go in the book to get more information about these questions. Final year students must request this book between November 1st and December 15th, 2014. And students also have the same time period, November 1st through December 2015, to send, to send updated address information of where they'll be residing at the end of January 2015. And of course, we put this information in because these students are graduating and so they may be going back home. So you want to make sure that they have their address where they will be January 2015 and not the school address. They will not be there at that time. Senior members have to pay a $10 shipping fee for the NAPLEX book, um, but the shipping fee is waived for dual, members, for dual members, although they still need to provide us with that shipping address in order to receive their books. So right now, I just want to show you an example of the benefits. As you can see on the first line, the, the dues amounts are different for the spring drive and the fall drive. The dual membership rate goes up to $115 for the fall drive. Also on line three, you can see that the shipping, that the shipping fee is waived for dual members, but single year members do have to pay that $10 shipping fee. For the pharmacy library questions, you see that, that the amount of questions does change from the spring drive to the fall drive, but students who join through the fall drive, dual year students, do get access to 200 bonus questions, and single year members get access to 100 bonus questions. Also on the bottom line, 
Um, complement, you can see that complementary liability sh insurance is not available for those students who join through the fall drive. So if you have any questions about that, just contact us and we'll be able to give you a little bit more information on that. Liz Wea, this is Crystal. If you wouldn't mind um, just um, defining what you mean by the term dual and what years of membership that encompasses. Okay, so the dual membership is a membership option that allows members to um, transition their final year student membership into a full pharmacist membership. And so you get a discounted rate um, when you combine both memberships together. So a student saves a significant amount of money if they decide to sign up as a dual member because we'll automatically transfer them over to a first year pharmacist membership once they graduate from school. And this only includes 2015 graduates at this time period. So any 2015 graduates that sign up, they'll be eligible to sign up for their membership. And also, once they sign up for their membership, they do get the benefits of the NAPLEX book, but they do have to be signed up by October 31st to be guaranteed this information. So now I want to go over the chapter reimbursement schedule. If your chapter has opted to allow APHA to collect your dues, the reimbursements are given up to five times per year. And you see um, on the screen where they're given by the end of the month, October, November, December, January, and June. Your chapter's administrative allowance for meeting the enrollment deadlines for the fall drive will also be distributed in February. And this is a great segue into discussing some dates that are very important for you to remember. These dates are something that you want to keep in the forefront of your mind, especially the first date, because all of the enrollments that we receive from your chapter by October 15th will get your chapter $3 per, enroll per enrollment towards your school's administrative allowance. And you want to keep in mind that students need to be enrolled online by this date. And if you have to use the paper enrollment forms for any reason, make sure they are postmarked by the October 15th date. Um, October 31st is also the last day for grads to qualify for the NAPLEX benefit. Although 2015 grads can still join after this date, the NAPLEX benefit will not be guaranteed. So if they are interested in that, if they need those bonus questions, you want to get them enrolled before October 31st. Also, NAPLEX um, requests will be accepted from November 1st through December 15th. And right now, we're still working on this process, but we'll be in communication with you well before the November deadline with instructions on how to um, walk the students through this process. And finally, all enrollments received from your chapter after October 15th through November 1st, we'll receive a $1 rebate per enrollment. And although that's great, you want to try to shoot for getting your chapter as much money as you can. So I encourage you to get as many members enrolled by that October 15th deadline. But if you can't, then you can shoot for that $1 and make sure that everyone is enrolled by November 8th in order for you to receive a rebate back from APHA. And in closing, I'm hoping that I gave you all the information you need to contribute to your chapter's fall drive success. And now I would like to turn the presentation back over to Crystal to go over any questions you may have. All right. Thank you, Latoya and Maggie. We have a number of um, we have a number of questions both on the technical side as well as the how do you make the fall drive fun and exciting for the students. So the, um, the first one I'm going to start with is one that I'm actually going to be able to answer. And that is, how do I get a copy of my chapter's performance sheet from Summer Leadership Institute? I haven't seen that yet, and my president has not talked about it. So if you have not um, had a chance to get with your president, or this is the first time that you're hearing about this um, trend sheet, what it is is uh, look at your membership in terms of many other areas of APHA, AFP activity. And the, the overall goal of this sheet is to help give you some perspective on where your chapter has been and then hopefully help you decide where you want to take it both this year and in future years as a chapter leader. 
Copies of it were distributed at Summer Leadership Institute to your designated chapter representative. So if you haven't heard of the sheet, I would definitely connect with them first to see if they have it. Um, if they've lost it, misplaced it, um, or if you want additional copies for your chapter to have, we can certainly send those to you. And you see the email address there on the screen for Lynette Plowden. If you just shoot her an email, she'll be able to send you a copy of that membership form. So our second question, um, and Maggie, I'm going to let you take this one. Um, it's a common problem that we hear from chapters, and that is in the fall, everybody is trying to get um, student pharmacists to join their organization. So there's a lot of um, competition for members and those limited dollars that students have. So what are some pointers for really um, selling APHA ASP membership and um, when you have a number of organizations on your campus? That is a great question and something that as a chapter president at Ohio State, I struggled with a lot as well because we had just so many different organizations. So one of the things that our chapter actually did was hosted a APHA ASP specific involvement fair. Now I'm sure many of your colleges of pharmacy already host an involvement fair and you probably have a little booth there. But we actually reserved our student lounge and had tables set up for all of our different projects and programs. I think one of the really unique things about APHA ASP is the sheer amount of opportunities and benefits that are available to students from the patient care projects to the National Patient Counseling Competition to Student Pharmacist Magazine. There's just so many different things within APHA ASP. So I think if you can touch on all of that early and show everybody how exciting it is, that really helps. Um, and then another thing that some chapters do, they actually split up their executive committee and kind of assign them to different first-year student pharmacists and reach out one-on-one -on -one and really give them that personal touch and that personal, like, hey, have you thought about joining? This is a really great organization. What questions can I answer for you? Do you want to come to our welcome back picnic? It's a lot of fun. So I think you know, between just making sure everyone is aware of all of the different opportunities and having that real personal connection. I think those are two really important things to help you get um, students involved as members. All right, thank you, Maggie. The next question I think is going to be for LaToya. So the question is, the um, without throughout the fall drive, um, you want to be able to track who's joined and who hasn't, so you can do more targeted membership. So what's the best way for students to um, track who joined and where would they get those rosters? So the best way to track um, who joined, what, hello? Yep, you're here. Oh, 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 sorry. The, the best way to track students who join is to go to your chapter advisor and request the roster. The rosters are real time, so anyone who joins to your chapter online will immediately show on an updated chapter roster. But students who do not join online is going to take a process, so we're going to have to receive those applications and process the payment before you'll be able to see them on your roster. And so it's going to be very important that you work closely with your um, chapter advisors throughout um, the fall campaign as well as your spring campaign. And LaToya, is the, the rosters when the advisors run them, is that real-time data or when does that information get updated? Yes, that is real-time data for those students who enroll online. But of course, it's when, because we have to manually enter the paper enrollment forms, you won't see those until we have received them and processed them in the system. So something that you may want to do is get with your chapter advisor and decide what your schedule is going to be um, for running those reports. So do you want them every Monday? Do you want them on Wednesdays and Fridays throughout the fall campaign? Um, just kind of meeting with them to discuss what's going to be easy for them to, to do and to meet your needs, as well as um, something that's going to be efficient um, for you as the chapter leader and running um, your membership campaign. So Maggie, this next question is going to come back to you. Um, you know, students have limited funds, and so one of the um, 
things that you as a membership vice president are going to hear a lot is, you know, $45 is a lot. Is it really worth it? I don't think I have that much money. So how should membership vice presidents go about um, encouraging members to really um, sign up for membership when that money issue might be what's holding them back? Yeah, that is a common issue, um, is, is money, of course. But I think you really need to hit home all of the opportunities that come along with that, you know, $45. And is it? it's not just $45 for a line on your CV. This is really an experience for you and a way for you to um, so start building your career early as a student pharmacist and enhance your education and network in the field and identify different career opportunities that might be available. So even though it does seem like a lot of money up front, really the opportunities that provide you, it's just a drop in the bucket. And you know, people say things like, oh, it's just a coffee once a month, or you know, like one less coffee every month, or maybe you don't get Chipotle every week or something like that. But I think really focusing on all of the benefits that come along with the membership really offset that cost. And I think one of the important questions that you're going to want to ask as a membership vice president um, is what is that person interested in? So when someone comes and tells you, oh, I don't, I don't think I want to, or I don't think there's anything in it for me, ask them some follow-up questions. You know, what is it that they like to do? What are they hoping to do after graduation? And have that list of benefits kind of in the back of your mind and have it tailored so that when they give you a response, you can kind of meet that with something that's an opportunity that their membership is going to provide them. That will really help encourage them and, and see the benefit and value of what they're getting out of their membership. Because it's not just about saying you're a member. We also want people to be active and engaged throughout the year because that's what's going to keep um, your members renewing after that first time they join. So Latoya, another technical question for you when it comes to those chapter rosters. Are you going to be able to tell on the chapter roster what year someone is in their program? Um, so are they a first year? Are they a final year? Have they signed up for the membership? Is that information available on the rosters? Yes, that information is available. Every student will show their grant year when your um, chapter advisors pull that roster. So it should have their student's name, their grant year, their member ID number, and their email address. So you'll be able to see all of that once your chapter advisor pulls your roster. All right, great. And then another question for you. Um, are the dual membership dues, in addition to the chapter dues, are our 2015 graduates exempt from paying chapter dues? The dual membership dues are, are um, separate from your chapter and state dues. So, you, so the student who joins as a dual member w will have to pay state and chapter dues. Okay. So those, just to clarify, so those are additional fees on top of that $115 mark. Correct. All right. And so another question for you, LaToya. After somebody signs up for membership, will they receive an email confirmation? Will they receive any kind of communications or welcome emails from APHA letting them know that their membership has been processed? Well, once they join, they'll receive a confirmation to their email address, of course, if they use the credit card, as well as a new member's um, packet they'll receive in the mail with their membership card and a welcome letter, and also additional information about our association. And about how long after they have signed up will they receive that welcome packet? Um, Joyce, do you want to answer that question? Uh, sure. Hi, this is Joyce O'Brien. I'm the, the Director of Membership Development, um, and I've kind of been lurking in the background. Um, typically, we send out member welcome kits um, every other week. Um, so with the scope of the fall drive, uh, we may get backlogged a little bit, but you will get an automatic notification when the students, uh, student pharmacist joins online. 
So you'll immediately know that um, the membership was processed. Um, and I just wanted to add one, one clarification or additional point of information about the dual year membership and the chapter and state dues. Those additional fees are only calculated on the student portion of the dual membership. So that first year um, of the, the final year for the students, the, the chapter and state dues. And then for their first year as a new practitioner under the dual membership, the state will be responsible for renewing you to their association. And then, of course, you, you wouldn't pay chapter dues anymore anyway. And so along these same lines of um, your welcome packet and your membership card, if someone didn't receive or maybe they re um, have misplaced their card, can they get a new card or where would they find the information that's located on that membership card? Well, the, the information that's, that's on the membership card is part of the notification that they get if they join online. If, you, you do, um, if they do join using the paper form, they can call the 800 number or send an email to info center um, at aphanet.org and request um, a, another card, and we're happy to send those out. All right, great. So our next question is in regard to the, the online process. Um, is there a way to opt out of paying your state dues? So if you um, are going through pharmacist.com for your state organization, do, can you opt out of paying your dues at that time? Um, or is it something that's required as part of your joining the association? Well, the dues will be included as a part of the joint process, so you won't be able to opt out of paying them if the state has um, requested that we collect their dues. The only way that you will see a zero fee is if the state is collecting their own dues, and they can give you the option to opt out of those dues. But if they want us to collect them, you will see those included in the total when you check out and join through the online enrollment process. And I would add on to that that if you, as the MVP or chapter leader, if you're registering and you, you thought you weren't supposed to have state dues on there, or maybe they're not on there and you thought they were supposed to be, work with your chapter advisor um, to make sure that that information was submitted correctly. And then if not, um, Latoya, would you be the best person to contact if, if somebody runs across yeah. something that is incorrect? Absolutely, because then I'll be able to find out the correct information and correct it on um, in the database. All right, our next question is um, going to be for you, Maggie. How do you make your fall membership drive um, fun and exciting, um, especially since everyone is going to be going online to sign up and maybe not having the, the same kind of boost space for a paper form as you previously did? That is also a great question. So a couple of things that I would suggest. Um, first of all, your first general body meeting that you have. So um, make sure that that's really exciting. Kind of introduce everybody to APHA. Uh, free food goes a long way. Um, if you do go to your college, if your college of pharmacy has an involvement fair that you go to, you can always have people have computers and even um, iPads set up at the involvement fair so people can sign up there. Um, some chapters will have a welcome back picnic or some sort of social that kind of gets everybody excited about that. And then again, it kind of comes down to that personal touch. You know, have you signed up yet? Are you, you know, are you going to be a member? Do you have any questions? Have you signed up yet? Can I help you with the process? And um, just a personal plug, if you guys are up for a student outreach visit this year, this is a really great way for um, excitement at your chapter. 
one of us, one of your National Executive Committee members or um, student development staff will actually come to your chapter and we would love to be a part of one of your meetings and help get the excitement going. So I know in September I will hopefully be doing some outreach visits, so if you are up for one, I highly encourage you guys to sign up for one by tomorrow at 5. All right, thank you, Maggie. Um, LaToya, this is a very common question um, that we hear a lot. If a student um, wants to renew their membership but doesn't have their pharmacist.com login information, what do they need to do? Okay, so if a student does not have their login information, they will call the 800 number and they'll be able to give them that information. Um, we want any student who runs into any problems to call that 1-800 number and they'll be able to reset their password and information so that they'll have access to the website. Also, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I just wanted to include also that 1-800 number is available in your MVP snapshot um, sheet that I included in the fall drive box as well as the MVP toolkit online. All right, thank you, LaToya. And another question for you, um, if you could do kind of a quick overview of where people actually go on the website to log in slash sign in for their membership, um, whether it's the first time or they're renewing, and then any re extra resources available on the steps of actually walking through how to sign up. Okay, so what you want to do is go to pharmacist.com and go to the APHA ASP area of the website. And once you're there, you would click on Chapter Officer Resources, and there it shows the step-by-step -step processes for how to, uh, for your chapter advisor to update your committee members. You'll be able to see the process to enroll online. Also, your toolkit is there, and there is a breakdown of all the imperative information that you need so you don't have to go all the way through the toolkit. They have topics separated out. So if you need information on those specific topics, you can just click on that, and the information will be there. It's in the, um, there's also a section for, um, in the chapter resources section all about membership. You'll find a number of different tools there. We are making some final updates right now to the MVP toolkit, and that will be posted ASAP, so be on the lookout for that. Something else that also might be a good resource for you, we have a promotional video for APHA ASP. So that can be something that you also, kind of back to the question that Maggie received, use to um, introduce people to APHA and some of those opportunities and some of the personal stories and benefits that have come with um, being a member. So related to that outreach question, Maggie, um, how do students find out if they're eligible for an outreach visit and what do they do to sign up? So you can go to our website. Um, pharmacist.com backslash APHA slash dash ASP or if you are on our Facebook, if, if you like our Facebook page, we have post the, posted the link recently. If you go to chapter uh, officer resources, I believe there is a section that is outreach visits. kind of gives you an, out, um, an outline of what the visit looks like and the kind of meetings that we expect to happen. And then on that page, there is a list of chapters that are eligible for a 2014 visit. Once you look and see if you are on that list, there is a form site. There's another link on that page, form site, where you fill it out. And you um, submit three dates that would work well for your chapter so that we can kind of try to schedule it. Um, Crystal, is there anything else I might be missing? No, in that same information, you'll also find out um, what needs to happen during an outreach visit, and some of the logistical information will be there as well. But if you have any questions um, regarding student outreach, please feel free to um, contact us, and we'll be happy to walk you through those steps as well. So another question regarding the roster is LaToya. Um, is email information for members 
um, posted as part of the rosters. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? So on the um, chapter rosters that the advisors run, are there email addresses list listed within that information? Yes, there are email addresses. Every email address for students who are part of your chapter will show on that roster. Okay, and it looks like we have one final question. So if you haven't gotten a chance to type in your question, make sure that you're um, getting those in. So our um, final question right now, that's why I think this is going to be um, one for you. Once the chapter advisor has updated the committee information within pharmacist.com, will a student who's been signed up as that particular position, will they know um, that they are now listed within the committee information? The student um, will know, but I think it's, it's more of communication between the advisor and the students and not necessarily the um, APHA and the students. The advisor will have access to all of this information, so they will provide you with the most up-to-date information about your chapter as far as the executive committees go, enrollments go, so they'll have access to all of that information. They'll be able to give it to you. And is there anything that shows up in the student's personal profiles that indicates that they're now on a chapter executive committee? Um, Joyce, do you want to answer that? It is part of the system. Uh, I, I haven't tested that to see if it's operational yet, but it should be in your profile. Uh, in the student's profile, uh, their committee uh, their committee assignments would show up. Uh, but again, I haven't tested that yet, so uh, it might not be deployed yet. All right. One final question, um, Latoya, and then we'll move into some final updates for everyone. Um, are there any plans to give MVPs access to these rosters in the future? Yes, there are plans to give MVPs um, access to these rosters. Uh, we are working on that now, and as soon as it happens, we'll be sending out an email update letting you guys know that you'll have access to them on your pharmacist.com profile. All right. Um, if you've got any questions, go ahead and type in those last thoughts. I'm just going to run through a couple of quick announcements for everyone. And the first of those is our Pharmacists Provide Care campaign. This is probably something, or I hope this is something that's not new to you. Um, it's a big priority for APHA. And you may be wondering, well, you know, as a membership vice president, I'm not the policy vice president. How does this affect me? Um, but this is a very important issue for the profession as a whole. And we need your help to get members active and engaged in the campaign. So being a part of the advocacy movement that is provider status is something um, that's an opportunity and a benefit um, for those students who sign up for membership. It's going to be a huge part of our profession in the future moving forward. So they want to be a part of APHA, and they want to be a part of the campaign. So you thought um, in your fall drives as another um, selling point of membership there are materials available, so you can tailor um, this information and maybe even provide it if people are signing up um, for membership throughout the fall. Um, and it's definitely something you're going to want to highlight throughout the year as a resource. So check out that portion of the website if you have not, and make sure that people are signing up. There are facts about what the campaign is, facts about what the public is saying, um, and it's an opportunity, one more opportunity for students to get involved. Um, is a very important area of the profession. And once people are signed up, a benefit to them is being able to attend the 2014 MRM. We're very excited about the locations and programs coming this fall. 
all of that information is available on pharmacist.com. So if, as you're getting people to sign up for the fall membership campaign, if they're interested in going to MRM, you can certainly send them to pharmacist.com for that information. Something that um, I do want to highlight for everyone is a new section this year. Um, think of the best ideas and programming that your chapter has. Well, we want you to bring those ideas to MRM and be able to share them with other chapters. So if you've had a really successful fall membership campaign or you're doing something extra special as a benefit to your members, um, share those ideas with us. You're going to see information coming soon for how you can apply to actually host a roundtable session at um, the MRM. So stay tuned for that information. And I wouldn't be doing due justice if I didn't also put in a plug for the regional office position. So if you would like to take your leadership skills to the next level, um, if you've enjoyed what you've been doing on the chapter level and really want to continue that leadership development and growth, I would highly encourage you to think about running for the regional office and all the information about how to do that and what the responsibilities are for each of the three positions is available on the MRM pages of pharmacist.com. Um, finally, be on the lookout for some information coming from the APHA Foundation for some ways that you can get more involved with them through the 1953 Society, as well as the Pharmacists Provide Care Campaign, which happens in conjunction with um, American Pharmacists Month. You can check out their website that's listed there at the bottom for more information on both of those. And then um, if any of you are interested um, in one more opportunity, and maybe this is something to highlight for those students who tell you that they're interested in being a part of public health service or some of the um, branches of the military, there is a special meeting that APHA hosts just for those individuals. It's called the Joint Federal Pharmacy Meeting. So um, it's an opportunity for them to come to D.C. and learn a little bit about what that part of the profession looks like. If you're here and close to the D.C. area, this might be something that's easier um, for people to attend, but it is one more benefit out there, and that is coming up this October. And for further information, you see the website listed there, jfpsinfo.org. So that is the information that we have for you this evening. We did have a couple of um, final questions that came in. So um, we will answer those. If there were any questions that you have that haven't been answered, please, again, feel free to um, follow up with us after the webinar. We're happy to, um, to answer those for you. The first question, um, Maggie, this one's going to go to you. Um, it's a question about lapel pins. So you may have seen on the white coats of some of your chapter members the gold and blue APHA ASP pins. And the question is, how can um, we order some of those pins for our fall membership drive. You can order those pins on our website. I believe it is with all of the membership information, and I believe they come in um, packages of 100. So there is a order form on the website where you can do that. Um, is there yep. any more information, Crystal? Yep, that's correct. Um, we do take um, check or credit cards, so you can pay either way. You'll see that information on the form. Once we have processed your payment information, that's when we'll send those pins to you. So that, depending on whether you're paying by credit card or check, um, whether you're mailing or you're emailing the form, it could take between two to four weeks for you to get those pins, kind of depending on which form of um, request you're using. So just keep that in mind that if it's time sensitive, Make sure you put those requests in sooner rather than later. And they're um, a great piece to use for your um, membership campaigns as well. All right, and just one um, a final question, and this is going to be um, for LaToya, regarding the um, pricing for dual um, members. Can you just go over that pricing structure one more time, um, what the rate is right now and what that covers? 
Okay, so for dual membership, the rate is $115 right now, and that covers two years of membership for the student. You'll be able to get your final year's membership covered as well as your first year pharmacist membership. Also, the additional dues will include your chapter dues and your state dues if you offer them for the state. And the goal of these memberships is to gain momentum for students so that they'll want to join and continue their membership throughout their first year of pharmacy. So you want to encourage any final year membership who come to your um, student drive to sign up for this membership because it's very beneficial for them and it also gives them a great discount on the fees. Joyce, am I leaving anything out? No, I, I think that's perfect. Um, it, okay. it just extends their network as they become a new practitioner. It, uh, the second year of the membership uh, allows them membership in the new practitioner network, uh, which again helps them to network. Also, they can transition into one of the um, other uh, practice academies. So again, it, it gives them uh, a lot of resources as they start out on their pharmacy career. And again, it, it does give about a 19% discount uh, if they were paying those two years individually. So it's also a good deal. And Joyce, we just had a question that came in regarding the um, request process for the NAPLEX review book. Could you maybe run through that one more time? Sure. Um, what happens is because a lot of students are out on rotation, they're joining now, or they joined last spring, uh, but we ask that they request the book during a time period of November 1 through December 15th. And at the time of that request, they'll be asked for their address where they're going to be at the end of January, beginning of February. If they're required to pay the $10 shipping fee as a single year member, that fee will be, um, they'll, we'll be collecting that fee at that time through a credit card payment. Uh, now, what we're still working through is exactly how that is going to work, that process. In, in previous years, we've had the, the final year student go to their um, profile in uh, pharmacist.com, and from there, there's a link. Uh, we may continue with that process in our new, with our new AMS or we may um, have a different process, and we're finalizing that now. So for the students, the most important thing for them is to make sure that they join by October 31st, the final year uh, 2015 grad, and then once we have the process nailed down, we'll be alerting you as the MVP, and we'll also be sending individual emails to the students directly telling them about the process well before we open it up November 1st. But we wanted to get the concept that even though they join now, they're still going to have one more step. That book doesn't just automatically get sent to them. They need to, they need to take an action between November 1 and December 15th. So it's just good to get that, those dates out there to them. And we'll keep you apprised um, as we finalize this system in our new AMS. All right, and it looks like we have one more question. Um, and then, Maggie, I'll turn it over to you to close us out. So our final question of the evening, for any students that are still in their final year, for any final year students who are um, looking to renew their membership, are they able to attain professional liability insurance through APHA? They can, they can get professional liability insurance through APHA. It just won't be complimentary. What we would do is ask them to contact um, HIPSO, our provider, directly. And their contact information is on um, the Members Need to Know Benefits page. That's a members-only page um, on pharmacist.com. But the liability insurance is a benefit for the spring drive enrollees. 
because it started May 1st. Uh, we have a set time period to offer that complimentary liability insurance. So unfortunately, that has passed. Um, but they can still purchase uh, discounted uh, HIPSO insurance. And again, the information is on pharmacist.com. All right, thank you, Joyce. Um, that's good information for you to keep um, in your mind. I know the spring drive isn't here, and you're thinking, I haven't even made it through the fall yet. Um, but that's good information for you to keep in mind, and you'll, you're definitely going to need that come your spring membership drive. So I want to thank everyone. And Maggie, I'll turn it over to you to, you to close us out. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. I hope that this webinar was able to answer some of your questions. If you do have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, hopefully, you had a chance to get our contact information. If not, it is on the website. Otherwise, my email is maggieoser at gmail.com. You can always email me, and I will either be able to answer your questions or find someone that will. Um, please remember that membership is, again, everyone's job. but if you are the membership vice president, it's especially important that you help really get your members um, joining and engaged and involved because our membership is how we keep our mission um, going within APHA, ISP, and how we can really do all of the awesome things that we do. So thank you so much in advance for your hard work, and we are looking forward to see what you all do this year. Thank you, guys, and have a great night.